Okay, so welcome to January 2019 monthly webinar for TradeTheFifth.com. We uh, we didn't have too bad a, a Christmas really. Some of our members did really well on those swings, uh, on the swing trading membership there on the shorts um, over Christmas. Uh, and now we started the new year off very, very well. Uh, what, but I have had a lot of questions about, uh, a lot of it's about Think or Swim and how to set up their charts. A lot of people have bought uh, or purchased the, the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite, the Day Trading Add-on and the Black Box Breakout Indicator. And uh, they see my videos and they just ask me to go through how I set those up. So that's what I wanted to concentrate on today both for futures and for, um, for stocks. Um, one thing you need to be aware of though, I don't have them all on one instance, otherwise it grinds your computer to a halt with, um, with Think or Swim. So if you see on this instance here uh, of, just let me know you can see the ES and the YN uh, charts. If you can just let me know, you can see those charts there. Okay, so this is one instance. This is the home screen, you know, when you've got the setup, the support, the chat, home screen, you know, everything like that. That's there. Now, connected to that, this is my futures. So this is one instance, okay? And uh, this is my futures, if you like. Um, and the way I look at futures is I'm, I'm only going to be day trading futures. Um, my, my main screen here, uh, I've got two charts, okay? And I've just used the, the the grid here to have the two charts. I've got ES and YM on the five minute, okay? Now, what I have on both of these charts is everything. The Elliott Wave Indicator Suite, the Day Trading Add-on, and the Black Box Breakout Indicator, okay? Because I need to be able to use all of those tools, if you like, on the five minute time frame uh, to look for potential uh, traits in the, in, in the direction uh, of the trend. So, you know, when we've got the chart here, we can see these breakout um, signals for the black box breakout. We've got the EMA cloud, which is part of the black box breakout indicator and the day trading add-on suite. Uh, we've got the multiple time frame dot cloud to give us our overall direction. Now, <clears throat> when the markets are like this, we have the settings for these. I want to go through the settings for the multiple time frame dot cloud here on the five minute for futures. Okay, so in here, MTF dot cloud. So we go to the hourglass in TMTF dot cloud, go to the gear wheel. Now, remember, let me move these out of the way. Okay, so on the MTF dot cloud, we've got at the top, we've got the green square, which denotes everything's all green. Okay. The top row is the current time frame that you're on. You can't change that. That's five minute because we're on the five minute chart. Then the next one we go backwards um, is 10 minutes. So the, the next row down is 10 minutes, then 15 minutes, okay, and then 20 minutes. Now the next one period to 20 minutes, you'll see there's a gap, okay? So you just put the same time in and then your key trend Time frame when you're on a five minute is 30 minutes only, okay? Keeping it nice and narrow. So for the black box breakout indicator and for the day trading add-on suite, these are the settings that you need for your multiple time frame dot cloud on the five minute, okay? Then I've got my multiple time frame stochastic, which is a pretty cool tool. Uh, and this is from the day trading add-on suite. And then I've got my, uh, uh, the oscillator, the wave oscillator down at the bottom there. So that's for both. Uh, you'll see on the left here, I've got uh, the tick chart. You can have that at the bottom um, as one of the sub charts on your main chart there. But to be honest, I just wanna see where the ticks are. Are they negative? Are they positive? Um, you know, what's happening to my current open trades? Um, you know? We made MVDA risk-free, good job. It's just plowed back through again. Uh, hopefully you got that out, Mark. <laughs> so, um, so it's about understanding where the tick count is to where your current open day trades are and 
you know, whether, whether it's on stocks or futures. So I've got my, my tick chart here. Um, I've got a watch list for futures for with the black box breakout um, watch list there to give me signals if I wanted them. I've also just, uh, as an example, just, just made up a watch list for stocks, if you like, and I can link that to another instance of Think or Swim, even on another computer. I have two computers. I have this main computer here with six monitors. Uh, I have a secondary computer for my day trading, um, which has a big 43-inch monitor and a normal size, sort of 27-inch. Um, but if I've got a chart open for ES on another computer, uh, or even if I link this link here to a chart in another instance on the same computer, or a chart that's on my other computer, as soon as I click, uh, as soon as I link it and click that, it'll open up a chart on that chart, okay? And we can go through that a little later as well. Um, also, what I like to do is, these are my um, pre-market timeframes, if you like. I like to see, as I'm doing my pre-market show, I like to understand what's going off in ES and YN, well, in that hour leading up to the markets. Uh, but then when I go into the markets, I use a flexible grid here. So now I have a two minute, a three minute, and a five minute time frame for ES, okay? On my other computer, I've got the same for YM. But this is my ES screen now, and on my other computer to my right, is my YM screen because the, there's the two futures contracts that we're trading and that we're launching our futures day trading service for uh, next month in, in the beginning of February. So one thing you'll notice on the two minute, I've not got any wave counts, okay? I've not got stochastics or anything. This is purely black box breakout indicator, okay? Which has the EMA cloud, the multiple time frame dot cloud, and obviously the signals for the black box breakouts uh, on the two minutes. Now, the only trade I took on ES today was pretty close after the open, came back down to test the cloud on the two minute. I got my signal candle here, 258275, because there isn't a 62, uh, was the entry. I got to my target here, took profit, 16 ticks, done for the day, okay? Uh, if that's 10 contracts, that's $2,000, okay? Um, so it's just, it's there, it's there for me. I've got it on three minutes as well, and I've got it on five minutes. What you'll see on the five minute though, is that I've got my oscillator, and I've also got my wave count as well. So it's almost similar to that first screen, is I've got my wave count, I wanna know where I am on that five minute time frame as far as wave count's concerned, and I've got my oscillator there. Uh, with, with the stochastic, I can just flick back to the charts and just see where the stochastic is as well if I need it um, on the five minute uh, and then just flick back to the flexible grid. On the three minute, again, it's just the black box breakout indicator, nothing else. Now, remember this, the, um, the settings for the multiple time frame dot cloud on the five minute, they are different for the three and the two. Let's go through them now. So on the three minutes, on the MTF.cloud, we go four, five, 10, 15, 30. Again, our anchor time frame is 30 minutes. The same for two minutes, we go to the beaker, MTF.cloud, three, five, 10, 15, anchor frame, time frame, 30 minutes, okay? And that gives us, you see the pullbacks here. You see, look at this pullback here, nice pullback. We're all green, we're bullish for the day. We pull back into the cloud on these multiple time frames here, and then we go green again, okay? These are the things we're looking for uh, to help us. Now, when we get a pullback like this, when we get the open here, uh, and then we pull back into the cloud, and we're still all green here and bounces off the cloud, that's the great, that's the signal for the day, and that's the one I've taken, okay? Not taking any others, because to be honest, it's not really a trending day. Okay, so that's futures. Obviously, I have ES on this, and, and then on, the, on my other computer, Y. Any questions on the, the futures setup? 
<clears throat> I did all that without coughing. So any questions, please uh, use the chat box uh, uh, on the, the future setup for Think or Swim. Okay, brilliant. Now, what you have to remember is Think or Swim really drags your computer memory down. Now, I've got two big computers, okay? They're gaming computers on steroids. So I've got a lot of memory and stuff. But even that, because I'm running three instances of Think or Swim and Ninja Trader and everything else, sometimes it can be a little drag. So what I do is part of my... <laughs> Um, of this instance here, okay, uh, for the futures instance, I actually run one of my main watch lists for stocks off there, okay? See this, it's linked to number one. I'm going to bring up a different instance that I've opened of Think or Swim uh, for my stocks breakouts. But I've actually got this list this watch list with the black box breakout indicators uh the signals on as part of this instance so it doesn't drag down my other instance that i've got another watch list on but it links to the same chart okay because i haven't got big watch lists on here i've just got the charts okay and i've not got that many charts so the idea is i've got one of my main watch lists that i use plus a couple more up on the, the screen above all I did was get the watch list, detach it, and then move it up, okay? Once I've done that, though, I must save the instance. So let's go through that before we move on. So I'm just going to pull that back up there. When everything is in position, so I've moved this uh, to the screen above, I click on Setup, Save Workspace As, and this is my... ES and NQ, okay? So everything's where I want it to be. Uh, I want it to open up on my flexible grid, all my, the extra watch lists that I've detached that are gonna link to other uh, instances of the charts already so I can click save. So I've saved that instance. No, you, uh, Jose, the, the instructional video with the black box breakout indicator shows you how to make those columns, okay? It gives you the script, and there's a very clear video of how to make those columns, okay? Um, we'll, we'll go through the columns a little bit um, um, when I go to the next instance. So that's that first instance. Now I'm gonna drag across my stocks breakout instance. So. When I talk about instance, when you, um, I can't show you because it doesn't show the toolbar, but I have Think or Swim uh, icon, the open icon, uh, as permanently pinned to my toolbar, okay? Now, when you've got one instance open, if you right click on that icon and click on Think or Swim, it opens another instance of Think or Swim. Okay, so once you've got your futures one, you don't want to start dragging your computer memory down with that instance. You open up another one, okay? So it doesn't drag it all, trying to do all everything in one instance. So I've done that, and my next one is my stocks breakout. And there's, I've got two screens on this one. My first, and I'll drag this over now, okay? And as you can see, it's got the setup support chat. So this is the, the home screen, if you like. And this is my for my stock breakout. Now, can you see the link number one here? Number one here. And when I bring the other charts over, that's number one as well. Okay. Linked to that watch list from my futures instance. Because I didn't want to drag this instance with stock breakouts. You see, on the I've got these watch lists down here on the left. If I start putting another one on there, it's going to drag the computer memory down. So I've left that, uh, I've put that other one on there, but I link it to that chart. 
So even though it's on a totally different instance, and it can be on a different computer, I click on KR, for example, it changes that chart. Okay, very, very simple. And again, so this is my stocks breakout um, instance of Think or Swim. The chart setup on this for me is really simple. On this screen here, I have two of my uh, watch lists. Okay. Again, I've got three more from my futures instance linked to, the, to these charts. Okay, so a lot of data running through there, a lot of signals on 5, 15, 30, 60, 4 hour, and the daily. Okay, so, and you can, uh, when I bring the other screen over, you'll, you'll, note, you'll note then I've got those other time frames uh, on charts as well. Uh, but just get to go into the watch list itself here. When we go to customize, you'll see all these, the black box things. I named them that. You can name them whatever you want to do. Um, but in the instructional video, Jose, you will see uh, to use, um, just to use a blank type of, um, we'll get there in a minute. Hang on. Okay, so we go to custom. When you open a custom um, thing, you click on the uh, the left script here, and then you'll see you go to Think Script at Think Script Editor, and this is all in the instruction book. And you'll copy and paste the script you got when you bought the black box breakout and the Kento. Then it shows you how to change the time frame to one minute, two minute, three minute, whatever you want to do. Okay, but don't go above a day because it won't work. Daily is the biggest time frame. And then you give it a name. So I call it black box breakout indicator uh, and whatever it is, uh, if it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. Okay. Uh, and then you can just build up uh, and move around, uh, add or remove your columns in your watch list. Okay. So that's the, this is my five minute. Okay. Purely black box breakout indicator. So the MTF.cloud. It's got the ATRs on for the day. Um, it's got the black box breakout indicator on the 5 and the 15. That's all I need. I don't need anything else. But you remember on my watch list, I've also got daily 60 minutes, 30 minutes, 4 hours. So my other screen linked to this instance, which is my flexible grid, which I detached, okay, is here. So on this, we have the daily time frame. This has my Elliott Wave indicator suite, which is including the oscillator and the false breakout stochastic. It also has my black box breakout indicator with the MTF.cloud and uh, the, the, the indicator in the EMA cloud. Okay. So because this, when you're um, trading the daily, whether you, you know you're going to be swing trading, so you'll be looking for instances uh, where you're going to get potential breakouts. Um, let's have a let's have a look here at some of these. Um, okay, so we are. I'm just going to try and find a recent one. Uh, okay, Netflix. Okay, so I'm in Netflix. Yeah. So on the daily time frame, I only need to understand where my wave count is, okay? So I do a lot of work on Netflix, as you can see. Uh, I've drawn in my channels for the current trends. Uh, this was the recent one, which was the parabolic trend. And then this is the longer term channel here, okay? And then we've got an even longer term channel down here. I've got my linear support resistance levels in. This is all part of my core trading strategy. Uh, training course, which is now available, and I will give you the link for that later. Please remind me. Um, but again, why I've got this on the daily, uh, and I've combined the black box with my Elliott Wave indicator suite. I can see recently on Netflix on the daily, we've had a one, two, three, four, five perfect five wave move on an Elliott Wave. Okay, it hit the fifth wave target, bang on. Okay, and now potentially we're in a trend reversal. 
How, why do I know? Because it's already gone above the wave four pivot, okay? Now, what happens when it goes above the wave four pivot? We've got to look for entries, either on this time frame or another. I got a black box breakout uh, indication just on the top of my support resistance level um, for on, on Thursday, okay? Uh, with the stop loss down here. So this is a really good situation in that I've got this around about where my big support and resistance zone is. If we go left here, this is quite a strong, look at this all the way along here, strong support and resistance zone there. Already gone through this one and my entry for my black box breakout signal is just above, just really above it. So 332.52 was my entry. My stop loss was printed by the black box. Where am I going? The next support resistance level is at 380. Got a great risk reward with that. We're on a potential trend reversal. It's had a great fifth wave move down. Find good support. Uh, and this, this is how that daily time frame works uh, for me because I can get in those fifth wave moves uh, and swing them or I can get in the breakouts and swing them as well. Okay. So next I have the four hourly time frame. Um, example, what a trade on one of those. Is that, is, was Lulu the one? Uh, we, we entered, got Lulu today, but I think that was off the daily. Uh, but again, I'm just going to show you this Lulu for another example, why you, you uh, could you know, use these combined together. You know, the way for pullback, on Lulu was way too long. It took, this is the daily time frame. It took way too long. Okay, the the, fi the five thirty five oscillators too deep. There's nothing there. But we know if that find good support and it gets good earnings, like it just did, um, we potentially could get up to that fifth wave target. So we keep an eye on it. We've got it on the watch list. We get a black box breakout signal last week. We put it on. What does it do today? Gaps up, takes us into the trade. Okay, really, really simple. Same with the four hour. You know, it works just as well on the four hourly. I think we're on HD with that one. Maybe uh, what other ones? Four hour. I'm trying to think now. I think Adobe's not even in yet, is it? And that's uh, again. So on the four hourly with Adobe, I'm looking for potential trend reversal here. Um, really really strong stock we take this just just quickly show you this is one of my hot stocks for the year on the weekly we've got a wave four pullback okay so i can just quickly switch to the weekly that's my channel it's broke out the channel it's come back in again and we're potentially on a fifth wave move we can't trade that it's too far there's too much of a you know the entry wouldn't be above there but Adobe is a good looking long for the next six months. We've just got to pick and choose when we get in it. So again, we are looking at the four hourly for me at the moment. Uh, we've had a one, two, three, four, five. It's at a big support level down here that I've drawn in there. Um, we've pulled back away, potential trend reversal here. And we've got the false breakout at the top showing a strong bullish trend. We've gone from all red to green to cyan. So they're all going in that cloud. Um, you know, we are looking pretty good. We've got a breakout signal. Okay. Uh, and so 214.06 uh, is the entry. Uh, simple as that. So that's the four hour. Then I've got the, the 30 minute and the 60 minute as well, all linked to number one. So no matter what list, I mean, I actually, bear with me. I've got a watch list on another computer. You've got to trust me, I'm doing this, okay? I'm going to change that link to number one, okay? And I'm going to click on BA. Okay, that's on a totally different computer. I've linked that watch list to number one, and those charts change to BA straight away. OK, so what I've done is I've split where all my watch lists are on different computers and different instances. So we are not overloading each instance of each computer. We just turn that back to three. OK. OK, so that's my stock breakout. You'll notice on the four hour, I've still got my false breakout stochastic. 
I've got the 535 and the Elliott Wave Cam. Now, when I go to 60 minute, I've just got my Elliott Wave Cam, because I want to know where it is on the Audi, and I've just got my false break cam. Um, sorry, my black box breakout and the MTF dot cloud. On the 30 minute, just got the, the uh, black box breakout indicator with the MTF dot cloud, nothing else, okay? So as you can see, as we go up the time frames, we start to introduce more, you know, the Elliott Wave count and then the whole Elliott Wave indicator suite and that sort of thing. Okay, so does that make sense on the stocks? Any questions on the stocks? Okay, it takes a bit of practice and don't forget, let me move this one out of the way. Once you've set everything and you've detached charts and, and um, watch list and everything, click on setup, save workspace as, this is my stock breakout one, save, okay? If you do all that work and you don't press save that, um, that workspace, when you switch it off and switch it back on again, it can be like when you left it. it you know, it won't, you won't have all the alterations, all the hard work that you've made. So at the end of every trading session, if you've made some changes, do it. <laughs> so intraday, now, if I'm day trading, I day trade off the five minute time frame, okay? Now, I also look for breakouts 30 minute, maybe 60 minutes as well. I don't usually trade off the 15 minute, okay? So I say, when I'm looking at five minutes, um, so for here, for example, on BA, uh, what trade did we do today? Um, what's going well? Facebook, we're still in Facebook. Um, is Facebook on watch list, this watch list? I think it's on the other one. Facebook. Where are you? Facebook, Facebook. It'll jump out of me in a minute. I'll just check it here. Okay, so we're in Facebook today on the five minute. This is the trade we're in at the moment. Okay, we're at, uh, what are we at now? 80% profit times risk. Okay, <clears throat> this is part of the, the um, stocks um, day trading signal service. So, you know, I'm looking at the 15, see where I am on the 15. Um, I've got my other charts open uh, the, with the daily. I can see the wave count where we are. I can see one a potential trend reversal uh, on that daily in that four hourly. We see where that is, you know, I bring just bring those over to show you. Um, okay, and now obviously I can see what's going off on the hourly. We bounced off that cloud and we're going, we're just getting a signal on the hourly as well. So that, that could be a nice signal for tomorrow for those not in Facebook if that, uh, if that pans out. Um, so yeah, Facebook, um, I'm, tra I'm day trading off the five minutes. But I will, at the beginning of the session, if I get an indication on the 30 minute, for example, I will trade that 30 minute as well. It gives you entry and exits all the time. As soon as you get, as soon as it meets our criteria, uh, it gives you the en the entrance and exits. So uh, I can put spy on my watch list. Yes, indeed, I can. Uh, in fact, it is on one of my watch lists. Where is it now? Um, there, there it is. So it's on it's on this watch list here. Look, that's detached. Okay. So I can have SPY here and it can give me 5, 15, 30, 60 daily uh, um, and whatever, okay? I can set that to three minutes if I wanted to. Two minutes, it doesn't matter, okay? And we can see SPY on the five minutes potentially now, I mean, I, I wouldn't do this later on in the session and our um, MTF.cloud is not really uh, there. Um, but yes, you will get those signals on your watch list. You can put anything in your watch list there. Uh, and you, as, you, as, you, as I showed you before, that was a detached watch list. Uh, where is it again now? There it is. Uh, so spies on there, the cues, uh, and it gives you the signals, okay?
Now, with Spark, when, you've got, when you're talking about the black box breakout indicator, Jose, what you've got to be remember is when you're coming down from below the cloud, okay, you get a signal like this, it's not really a good signal, okay? You've got to come out, test, and then go, okay? So potentially now, this signal setting up, if it wasn't so late in the session, I mean, for me it's late in the session because I don't like to trade too late. Um, you know, you see how that's changed now? Now you've got higher volume to the downside, okay? If it goes green, you know, the signal line will come back up again. So this is live, you have to wait for the candle to close, okay? You have to wait for the candle to close. Um, so yeah, you can set that up at any time frame, um, on SPY, Qs, whatever you want to do, or, or on ES. Uh, remember, I showed you the ES trade earlier. Whoops, bear with me a minute. I've got too many screens dragging too many things around. Uh, so yeah, ES for me earlier, this was the move, you see? We, oh, this was the open. We came back above the cloud, okay? We came back down to test the cloud here. There was no signal. This signal didn't touch. We came back out. We tested the cloud. We were all green. Got the signal. That's the signal to trade there, okay? Right. Any more questions on think or swim, how to set up these charts, different instances, uh, stocks and futures? Uh, combining the black box breakout indicator, the day trading add-on sweep, and the Elliott Wave indicator sweep. Any more questions? Now's the time. These are the sessions that we do each month, which are recorded um, to help you make the most of all of these. Uh, and it, we're not just staying at three. Uh, I, I used to trade a very good stochastic strategy uh, about five or six years ago. And I'm developing that now from your indicator suite. And this will be pretty cool um, because when things aren't trending and we've got that roller coaster action on stochastics, I'm going to be combining stochastic MACDs, our EMA cloud, uh, and we're going to put entries in there. So we're going to have a stochastic strategy as well uh, for an indicator suite. Um, so any questions on this so far? No. Does anybody want me to look at Ninja Trader? I've got it open. I can show you the black box breakout indicator for Ninja Trader. It works exactly the same. Now, this is slightly delayed data because I don't use Ninja Trader very often. Uh, give you Facebook here. Let it do its calculation. Okay. Okay. So it works pretty much the same. It's got the black box breakout indicator, uh, the MTF dot cloud on the bottom. It's got the squares, the dots. It's all the same. So the cyan is yellow. Um, again, what we do here with Facebook, we see that move up through the cloud, comes back down to test. We get that signal here. This is the signal we entered on, uh, and then. This is where we are right now. We've just had a recent signal as well. And what it does, it takes the line all the way to the right uh, until we get a new signal there. Uh, but that signal's triggered, triggered now anyway. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so it basically works exactly the same. It's got the, 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 the cloud uh, there. It just looks a little bit different, but it does exactly the same job. Um, and, you know, it's really, really cool tool. Anybody got any questions on the Ninja Trader version before I open up the floor for people to ask me to look at some tickers or uh, ask any more questions? By the way, the black box breakout indicator does not work with Forex, okay? It is purely uh, futures and stocks. It needs volume. It needs to be able to account for volume accurately. And so it's about data source and Forex uh, volume is not accurate. 
Uh, so it will not work on Forex. It is, this is why we are looking at a stochastic one that will work for all three again. Um, but I just needed to produce this one because it is really, really good. It just won't work for Forex. Okay, so no questions on that. Does anybody want me to look at any tickers? Because today was purely designed around showing you around how to combine those indicator suites that we've got uh, on Think or Swim and trying to uh, you know, give you the sort of chart layouts that I have. You want me to look at BA, Jose, what time frame or just Okay, so let's bring BA over on my on the 60 minutes. Let's go big here. Okay, so we are strong bullish bias. No need to isolate down here, really. What's that? We need a pullback to the cloud on the 60 minutes there. We've got a breakout forming on the four hourly. It's a, quite a bit away from the cloud though. Um, we've gone all green. You see, false breakout on the top denoting strong bullish trend. All green here. And it's a four hour, so you've got to expect to swing this. Okay, we've had one signal triggered here. We've got two more that haven't. Um, so, you know, this is the sort of thing you'd be looking for a breakout. To be honest, I think I'd take the more conservative one with a 35750, uh, 35749.5, and you know, that sort of uh, entry. Uh, I mean, we've gone now, you're, you know, we've had a really rocky ride here. Um, but you've got to be careful. You've got to look left when we're looking at these types of trades. Um, we've got some major, again, I always draw these in because it, it, again, it appears in other charts. So when I draw this, well, it goes back a while now. Big support and resistance zone here. Okay. Okay, so bound, round 370 is a big number here, but look what happens. It's on all the other charts. There it is on the 30 minute. There it is on the 60 minute. Okay, so you only need to draw once. And even if on my other computer now I go to the A and I open up a chart, that support and distance zone will be there. Okay, you've got to frame your chart. <clears throat> Once it's on there, it's on there for good. You can extend it if you need it and all the channels and everything like that. Uh, but on the 60 minute, I would say I would wait for a pullback into this, um, into the cloud and I'd look for the breakout. We are strong bullish. Don't get me wrong. I mean, to be honest, if it doesn't come back down, I'd probably look even smaller time frames. Uh, for a breakout. I mean, look, on the 30 minute, we've tested the cloud, we've bounced off the cloud, now we're waiting for that first 30 minute green candle with increased volume, but squeezing and an entry. So we're looking for that now. Okay, <clears throat> so I can see it's really strong bullish at the moment on the on the, some of the multiple time frames we've got here, we've gone all green on the bottom as well. But on the 30 minute, we've bounced off the cloud, you know, Go down to the 15 minute. What does it look like on the 15 minute? Let me have a look. Okay, with the 15 minute, it's still in the cloud. No, no signal. Okay, does that make sense, Jose? How I've gone about uh, looking at the BA? Yeah. Okay. This is why I've got this screen: the daily, the four hour, the 30, and the hour there. And then on, on the, the other screen for those, for that same instance, I've got the five and the 15. <clears throat> no problem. Anybody got any other questions? Want me to look at anything else for you? Before my throat gives out, because it is getting very sore again. <clears throat> oh, 
hang on, just look what happened on BA, just as I was finishing speaking. On the 15 minute, we've just potentially getting now a black box breakout indicator. See how it's moving now. Now, if this current candle stays where it is, we'll get the signal once it closes. If it goes too high, too long, that signal will disappear, okay? It has to meet certain criteria within our black box uh, breakout strategy. If that candle goes, now I can tell you straight away, because it's green, it's got more volume than the previous candle, okay? The previous candle is blue. Now this has got increased volume with price action. It's out of the cloud. We are waiting for it to close. Okay, once it closes and we've still got the signal there, it's good to go. Okay, cat. Okay, let's see where we're on the daily first. Oh, that's ugly. That is really ugly. most likely bearish bias because that wave four has just taken way too long and it's not really i mean there's loads of gaps in there as well um you know got to go down to other time frames to see where we are and what's happening so go to the hourly okay so we're in a short-term bullish move it's not very strong Again, when we're looking at this, we are above this big resistance level here, which is pretty good. Uh, and if that can hold and we, we get a signal, we could go long. The next big resistance level is 142.60. So again, when we're looking at this, we've got to draw this on. I always put the zone in there for the, there we go. Okay. So we've got that level, we've got a potential target level there. It's all fresh air. There's no big support resistance zone in this bit here. Forget the gaps, they're not support resistance zones. They're people playing these stocks pre-market, okay? Driving the price that most people can't do. So that's not a support resistance level. This is, okay? Now, if we get a breakout at some stage on, a, on a, one of our time frames. Uh, and we've bounced off the cloud, it could be a good signal because we, we are short-term pretty bullish. We've gone through this resistance level, which could act as support now. Okay, let's just put that in there. That's where, we, where we, we're through that. It's now below the cloud. If that cloud can hold and we get a long signal, we've got 142, we've got fresh air between there and $142. You know, so we, we then, we've got our um, multiple time frame set up here. We can just wait for our signal. We can put Caterpillar on our watch list, okay? And if we get that black box, we know we're looking for a long on there. Uh, we've got a long signal actually on the four hourly if you wanted to swing it there. Look at that. We've got false breakout on the top. We've gone green, we've gone all red to green and cyan. We should be getting green further and further. Uh, we've got our target here that we drew on the other chart. Uh, let's put our risk to reward on here. Um, you know, we've got this laces signal, which is the one we're going to take. So 128.95. Is a stop 103 33 30 that's there or thereabouts. There we go. Risk to reward one to two to that next resistance zone. That's a good looking trade to me on Caterpillar. Break out to the upside 133.34 would or 35 I've put there as your entry. You've got the stop at 128.95. Just around about there. Okay. Good looking trade to me, even on the four hourly. 
we've come up, we've gone through this big resistance level, came down to test the cloud here, and now we've got the breakout. And that breakout is from this candle here. Okay, we haven't broken the stop and we're moving back up again. So as long as it doesn't break the stop for the order, the order's still good. That good to you, Yin He? There's a good example there, Caterpillar on the four hourly. This is why it's important to have your setup like this. You know, I've gone, <clears throat> no, the daily's no good for me. I've looked at the hourly. I've found some really good support and resistance levels there. There's going to some zones that are going to help us. Uh, nothing really happening on the 30 or the 60 or the four hourly. Good looking one there. One more then, guys, before I pack up. Any more for any more before I, I call it a day? <clears throat> I'm starting to lose my voice with my cold. <coughs> Excuse me. PG. I've had this on my watches for a while. It's just not going anywhere, is it? Um, okay, so PG is on my watch list for a breakout to the upside. Um, we, we're still within the bounds. So I had the signal here at 93.55, which is above that wave two anyway. It's really hanging on and going sideways in this, um, in our EMA cloud, Jose. The stop loss 89.31 hasn't been broken. We're above this major support resistance zone and I put my target here between, you know, in the middle, the middle of there is around about $100, okay? Um, my target zone, I've drew, just drawn in manually, um, you know, but this looks good uh, through 93.55. It needs to break that range first. And this is sometimes the black box breakout indicators, you know, strengths as well. Um, we've recognized a big move down. It's found great support. It's come back up, but it's not got enough juice to go any higher at the moment. So that that sort of formula that we put together, if you like, to give you that entry is a sensible entry. So 93.55 is your entry long, targets around $100 and the stop loss is 89.31. <coughs> okay. 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 Fantastic. Thank you guys for, for attending today. Hopefully it's been useful, something different. Uh, just showing you how I set up my charts and TOS and combine those indicator suites that we've got. I did want to share with you the, the new core trading course. I did this live in, um, in San Diego recently, okay? Um, but it is also available now in a video course, which is really, really good. Um, if I bring this over here. So we, we talk about understanding trend behavior, uh, simple set of rules to measure that trend behavior, sort of Elliott wave theory simplified, made better, uh, price action and volume at swing points. So really, really interesting stuff here. Um, so people that attended this live in San Diego has, has, have said they never uh, seen volume and price action described in that way, but it's really important. Uh, framing the trend with trend channels, linear support, and resistance levels, ABC corrections, and then putting that whole strategy together with live examples. And basically it's in video format here, as you can see. I'll give you the link up for the core trading strategy. Always good uh, to get some education there, especially uh, if you are with me, uh, with your indicator suites and anything like that, this core trading strategy course is a must, I must say. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your training day. I'm going to call it a day now. Uh, if I, let me just check on Facebook. Oops. Okay, Facebook's doing pretty well now. But at 100% profit times risk. 
it's a day trade so we can't carry it over we had to break out back here that was a signal didn't actually trigger till here uh, and now i tell you what mark we're going to take profit on this if you can close that down we'll take 100 percent on facebook to clear the day last two trades winners hca and facebook we broke even on nvda yet Did we make it risk-free? I can't remember. No, that was ages ago. We're still in Facebook. We'll discuss it later. But yeah, we're definitely still in Facebook. Okay. Right, guys, I'm going to start recording. And then uh, I'll see you all very soon. The recording will be available on the blog uh, in the next day or so.